In chemistry, you'll be doing yourself a tremendous favor if you train yourself out of using the word strong and weak when it comes to talking about concentration. We're going to use those two terms for, to mean something else that's going to be related to concentration and means something completely different. So make sure that you talk about anything having to do with concentration as either being very concentrated or not very concentrated. But it'd be better for us to actually have values and a unit for that. And the unit that we use for this is molarity. It's going to be our measure of concentration, and it's going to be given in terms of the number of moles per liter. Now, if we have a fewer size mole, we just have to make sure that we convert from maybe millimoles into moles. If we have smaller volumes, milliliters, we have to convert to liters first. Then we just divide them, and out pops our molarity. Now, I also want to point out, you can determine the number of moles that you have from mass and other sorts of problems. Uh, when we get to ideal gas law, we'll be able to determine the number of moles based on the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. Volume down here, make sure you've done that conversion early on and you're in good shape. Now, it ties into a whole system of other calculations that we know about. So we know that we can convert from grams into moles by using the molar mass. Similarly, we can use the volume or the molarity paired up with the other one in order to find out the number of moles. And then if we know the stoichiometry of our balanced chemical reaction, we can convert to any other form that we have there in the solution. And sometimes we'll need to tie this into problems like limiting reactant problems or any of them, really. Um, molarity is going to be a cornerstone calculation, so much so that I'm not going to give a ton of examples right now, simply because the list would be insanely long. Uh, it's going to be something really challenging to make an exhaustive li list for, and in fact, the exhaustive list of problems you can solve using molarity is called Chemistry 1 and Chemistry 2, and extends into the later chemistry courses as well.